I'm Hetty Rapner, and I'm founder and president emerita of the Women's Business Development Center. My name is Inhe Choi, and I'm the executive director of the HANA Center. My name is Reyna Ortiz. I work for Chicago House and Social Service Agency, and I also work for an organization called Task Force Prevention and Community Service. I'm Dory McCorder, the CEO of the YWCA Metropolitan Chicago. My name is Hora Kasavi, and I am a political fashion creative, the voice of Juju Azad, um, founder and host of Because We've Read, and organizer of a sewing and production cooperative for refugee and immigrant women here in Chicago. My biggest move was I was a teacher, and I became assistant superintendent of schools, and then assistant commissioner of education in the Carter administration. I was going to change education and I worked very hard on Title IX to provide equity and parity in education for women. When President Carter lost the election, I left and came back to Chicago. And that was a big move to come back and start the Women's Business Development Center. We founded the Women's Business Development Center in 1986. Less than 10% of all businesses were women owned at that time. Now, close to half of all businesses in the United States are women owned. We were one of the very, very first women's business assistance centers in the country. And we helped to replicate what we did in other states um, very successfully in nine other communities. There are now 150 women's business development centers around the country. The public policy issues and the advocacy issues that we were involved with is to work with corporations so they understand the value of contracting opportunities to women and minority-owned businesses. So we were one of the first major investors in the Chicago Foundation for Women, and there were very, very few foundations who would support advocacy and women's issues. And Chicago Foundation for Women was a reflection and a response to that. That was a very significant foundation for me, and I've been a, a major contributor financially to it since the very, very beginning. I'm very committed to giving back, and the Chicago Foundation for Women is the place to do it. HANA Center is an organization that was led by a vision of just really building a community by combining all the resources and to be more impactful. And one way we thought that would be really impactful would be to combine the work of social services and community organizing together. This merger was about a six-year-old endeavor, but we finally did it. And my role, um, I began as a community member and later joined the executive leadership team. Social services and organizing historically have not worked together. Bringing them together was a challenge. So we begin with childcare. We also do workforce development. We would do worker rights and employment work. We also serve immigration and also senior housing. And on top of all this, we do community organizing and advocacy work. So the work of supporting survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault was always strong um, under Korean American community services. We are incorporating gender justice, immigrant justice framework. We have incorporated our work to also fight against employers who are sexually assaulting women. And also we are uh, working more deeper with our young people, particularly young men, cis male, who are struggling around you know, violence at home, poverty, isolation. These get translated into their microaggressive behaviors toward others, toward women, young women. And so um, we really took on this gender justice as a kind of the focal point for 2019, but we're beginning to work with our young men because we feel like that's, that's an area where the, the gender justice work and violence in our homes really need to be tackled. So that's where we're really beginning. Women really are at the forefront and women are the ones who can actually have the guts, have the openness, um, have the creativity to say, let's really do this in a real way. I was always fighting for my existence as a trans person in this society. I helped coordinate a trans program at Chicago House and at Task Force, I am the drop-in manager. I run and manage a drop-in youth space that's primarily focused between trans and gender non-conforming youth. There's a large portion of our community that is rejected by their families. They're rejected uh, or they're so passionate about their individuality that they're risking the comfort of their own home. 
and we find a lot of our youth on the streets, 15, 16 years old. I've housed 52 LGBT trans and gender non-conforming youth from the streets into permanent supportive housing. And in the last week and a half, we've got uh, like another seven to nine youth pools. And it's a whole process, but when it works, it works so well. Being recognized by the Chicago Foundation for Women for me as a trans woman, it was wonderful. I am a trans woman and it's a huge identity for me. So to be recognized by the Chicago Foundation for Women for me was groundbreaking and progressive and it makes me feel wonderful. I am a woman. I'm a trans woman and, and I support women and I want women to support us as a community because at the end of the day, we are all feminine entities and we should support each other. The work of the YWCA is quite lofty. Our mission is to eliminate racism and empower women and we work to do that every single day. We look at our work across three, what we like to say as empowerment priorities, freedom from violence and access to safety and wellness, education and training, and then economic sustainability. Part of what we have been trying to do is to really create this new model in terms of how we accelerate change. I consider us a 140 year old startup. And so we've really been focusing on really taking this organization um, from a 140 year old social service agency to a 21st century social enterprise. We think about the impact and the revenue generation opportunities and that mindset is what we consider a social enterprise mindset and in doing that we have absolutely increased the resources to do this work. For the YWCA, for us to do the incredible work that we do, it is a thousand percent dependent upon our people. We also had to look at the women and the benefits that we provide that do the work every single day. We made sure that we addressed in compensation. For us, it wasn't just about parental leave because we know that women also provide care for parents and other family members and self-care. Turnover numbers were about 40% and now they're down to about 14.6. It's amazing what happens when you pay people what they're worth. One of the things that I'm most proud about in terms of the moves that the YWCA has made was really doubling down on our approach to being a social enterprise and launching the first ever exchange traded fund by a nonprofit for women's empowerment. Part of the impact that we expect to see from this fund is giving corporate a roadmap to how they can also work on women's empowerment. Thinking broadly about the moves I've made absolutely coming to the YWCA has been a big move on a number of factors. I think it allowed me to express my love for business and my love to impact the world and figure out how to do that in unique and innovative ways. And I think what's really next for, for me is to hopefully continue to demonstrate how we can create positive impact as well as do good business and they don't have to be separate objectives. Juju Azad is, I hate to call it a blog just because it's such an outdated term. It's sort of like an online multimedia platform and it really serves as a place where fashion and art are used as a means of talking about social justice issues and making conversations about politics so much more accessible. When we talk about fashion, the way that we dress mixed with our race can kind of make those conversations even more clear. That's sort of what Juju Azad is, is working on doing. Hashtag Because We've Read is a radical international book club sort of here to challenge the way you see the world and your place within it. The books and the book club is really to encourage people to have intentional conversations about politics um, in a more accessible way again. So we also have um, over 30 chapters around the world that have opened up just in the past few months from Tehran to South Africa to Nigeria to London. It's been just a really fun project to be able to meet and grow and learn from each other globally and also be able to kind of build the framework for global solidarity. The next move is the launch of the Immigrant and Refugee Women's Sewing or Production Manufacturing Cooperative, and it's the first of its kind in the United States. Being able to provide manufacturing for designers that's like ethical and very transparent, I think is such a big need in the fashion industry. As someone who's a daughter of immigrants, I know firsthand how difficult it is for people to be able to get a job when they don't speak English, they have so many barriers. So being able to also create a space where women are able to get work that is 
above a living wage and is really dignified, has been really transformative um, for everybody, and in, including myself, <laughs> in the cooperative. Fashion is really feminist, and we only don't give it value because we live in a patriarchal world that doesn't value women's work. So for me, being able to use fashion as a form of political conversation is, I think, a feminist act in and of itself, but also just being able to bring um, art and the value of fashion back into it away from this um, commodification and fast fashion that we're also used to that also devalues the art.